بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يعده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له وأشهد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم All praise is due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. We bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one who has no partner. And we bear witness that Muhammad is Allah's true servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Allah tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon that O ye who believe be mindful of Allah be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasin li amri wa ahlul uqbatha min lisani yafqahu qawli subhanak la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana inna ka anta la'alimu lakim I pray that may Allah open my chest make easy for me this task and loosen the knots of my tongue that these words may be understood and glory be to you Allah, glory be to you alone that we have no knowledge except that which you have bestowed upon us verily it is you who is the all hearing or the all knowing and the all wise Bismillah Again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Peace and blessings upon each and every one of you. And Juma Mubarak to you all on this blessed day of Friday of Juma. So our topic that we have lifted up on this aspect of adapting faith, uh, it comes from maybe the feeling that, uh, that we have, that uh, we hear of our connection with our faith sometimes feels uh, like it goes through seasons and it's, it's not something that is completely connected in a way that we're, we're feeling, uh, you know, not the full gratification, we're not feeling maybe fully connected, uh, and, and thinking that it's sometimes our faith may begin to hollow out, um, you know, we're living in a world where there's no shortage of uh, things that might uh, hit at or undermine our faith that may make our walk difficult as people of faith, uh, that may challenge our belief in God, or that might challenge uh, our belief in our faith uh, in any aspect, um, whether that is feeling like we're fighting against injustices and the uh, and, and against oppression, but the uh, injustice and the oppression just does not seem to cease and does not seem to stop, uh, or in any other aspect that we may be leaning into with our faith uh, and thinking about because we're not seeing the results that because of that, our faith in and of itself is beginning to hollow or that we are transitioning from one part in our life, um, going to another part, whether we're you know going uh, from one space to another, starting one job to another, going from high school to college. Uh, now we're in a different environment and atmosphere where it feels like our, our faith is not something that uh, is conducive or can be something that uh, helps us benefit or experience life as full as it can, um, and that it's it's kind of hollowed out in a way. Um, thinking about that faith in and of itself is not just to be seen in the life of a human being as just a tool that is of a singular use. So, you know, when, when, when we're born, when we're created, when we're brought into this world, raised up in faith, uh, it's, it shouldn't necessarily just be like one particular tool is being given to you. And now you have to utilize that same tool for everything that will kind of come up uh, or just for one particular purpose. So if, if it was, for example, if to make the analogy with respect to tools, if you're given a screwdriver or a hammer, uh, you're not going to be told to with this hammer. Now you have to go screw in uh, different screws or you have to hang these different frames. You have to do all these different things just with this hammer. Uh, you're going to find that that hammer is going to uh, you know, hollow out in terms of its use fairly quickly, or same thing for the screwdriver, that there's only so many things it can do, but now, hey, we have to actually, uh, you know, do some carpentry, we actually have to do other things with it, we have to paint, we have to do all these different things um, that might be required, you're going to find that screwdriver also has very little use in these other areas. Um, but when we conceptualize faith, and when times we feel that we've uh, we're we're raised in, into faith, or we we identify with the faith. We oftentimes see it in that way of just a single type of use, or it's it's kind of uh, held that notion for us that uh, in the manifest version of uh, we just have uh, when we think about our faith, we just have our prayers, we have our fasting, we have our ibadat, uh, we have our ways of worshiping that we have connected, uh, but we we feel it's it's disconnected from the rest of the way uh, with our life in terms of how it goes about um, that when we are going through. Uh, you know, life as a whole, 
we may feel this period in which we're struggling to connect with our faith. Um, we're struggling to connect with the essence of our faith and find ourselves, uh, identify ourselves as spiritually feeling disconnected, um, that we localize and saying that this is a spiritual issue that we're fear experiencing, um, that our faith has just hit kind of a, a crossroads and it's just, uh, it doesn't feel like it's given us any value in a sense. And I think that it's important for us to think about how re we reconceptualize faith. We reconceptualize how we understand faith to be, um, that when we see uh, this notion of adapting faith. It's not necessarily that our faith in and of itself is changing. The essence of the, the faith is changing with respect to its theology or uh, its essentials and what are its foundations or anything like that. But the adapting faith, I think, when we look at it is that our faith is not necessarily just the single tool that we may conceptualize it or see it to be in certain instances. But our, our, our faith in and of itself is one of those kind of all-in-one type of tools that it has all the different things that we may need for different seasons in life uh, and, and, and can meet us in that way. But it's also important for us to reconceptualize what do we identify as faith? And the question I think that oftentimes uh, we, we talk about and we work with is when someone lifts up that they're struggling in their relationship with God or they're struggling in their relationship or their connection to their faith, question not necessarily just being like well what's the localized specific specific aspect what's you know just just to focus in on that let's say let's just focus in on the spiritual elements and try and uh, address this as just a spiritual issue but the question we should also ask ourselves is what else are we struggling with in life what else is going on in our life um if we take a little bit of a zoom out and uh, we take a look at what else is going on for us relationally. How are our relationships? How are our friendships? How are we in the social sphere? How is our environment? How is the space that we're living in? Um, how is uh, you know our job? How's our work life? How's our balance? Um, how's our personal health? How's all of these different things? And to see those not necessarily as separate from our faith, um, but seeing those all just as much of a contributing part of our faith as any uh, particular aspect as, that we associate, whether it's the ibadat or whether it's the communal aspects or anything like that. But thinking about when we reconceptualize and that we're struggling with our faith, it's not just a struggle of one particular aspect. It, it's a holistic struggle. Um, it's something that uh, it may be an indicator for us to think about, well, where else, uh, what, what is kind of bringing about the struggle in my connection to God? What is bringing about the struggle in my connection with uh, my faith? And odds are, and chances are that it, it, it that, that struggle manifests from something uh, in, in another sphere of our life that's social or uh, relational or intrapersonal or whatever it might be. And so being able to take a little bit of a step back to see when we think about how we navigate our, our, our faith amidst the changing currents of life, that if we treat our faith just as something that is an additive, is something that is just of a certain function, is just, you know, uh, superficial in a way, um, but is not intrinsic and embedded to us uh, and is not being carried out uh, in and with each and every breath that we take, then it will very, very quickly hollow out because it's only going to feel like it's it's going to uh, feel like interruptive. It's going to feel like it's just a barrier. It's going to feel like it's something that uh, is is taking away from the, the problem that is at hand. But just as much as it is a part of our faith to pray before God, just as much as a part of our faith to give alms to the poor uh, or to do any of these aspects and to connect with our relationship with God in this way, just as much as our as that is a part of our faith, so too is it to also look at the other aspects of our life uh, in that in that umbrella. Uh, just as much time as we spend with our family, just as much time we spend, uh, you know, properly sleeping and giving rest to our bodies. Just as much time as we spend uh, with, you know, uh, in terms of balancing our work life out. All of these different things have ripple effects, but are all connected in and of themselves to seeing that how we navigate our faith. So when we say that we're struggling with our faith or we want to better connect with our faith, we don't want to just isolate into that spiritual dimension. We want to take a step back and say, how are we doing holistically? How are we doing as a whole? Because our as, as we sleep, as understand from the Quran that you know our life, our living, our prayers, all of these things and our death, our dying, all of these things, uh, our entire existence is for Allah. It's for the worship of God. Um, and so uh, every breath that we take, every moment that we have, every time that we wake, all of these things, whether consciously or unconsciously, 
we're walking in faith. Um, so long as we uh, identify it, as long as we hold it in that space, every walk of ours is in faith. And so when we say we're struggling with connecting to God, we're struggling with connecting with our faith, we're struggling with connecting with something like that, it's not an abstract. It has something that is uh, within uh, our manifested sphere, or our, our level here. Uh, and so it's important for us to be able to take a step back and say, well, what is kind of going on in that sense? And just as we would work through a challenge for us that would be relational or interpersonal or anything like that, so too we would be, would we uh, bring that forth with respect to our faith? Um, and what's very interesting is that when we are going forward with respect to how we can adapt our faith, how can we, uh, how does our faith adapt? How does the, these kind of come about? Our, our own mindset is the biggest way of how we uh, can make this shift is that uh, we, we hold on to what is core to us, what is foundational, what is essential for us. But when we adapt, when we change, it's it's us using different tools in that same uh, particular toolkit that our faith is. It's not thinking that, okay, I can't use this anymore, so I'm going to use it in unorthodox ways. Like, I have to, you know, reconstruct this entire home, and all I have is a screwdriver. I'm only going to get so far. I can maybe use it as a hammer, maybe use different things. Uh, but it, you're going to find very quickly that there's only so much you can do before you feel frustrated with it, and you want to just throw it away uh, because it has no value. But being able to see what is all the different values that are there, you're all the gifts that are intrinsic to you, all the aspects that uh, are inherent within you, um, that uh, are core to you, the things that are around you environmentally, these are all essential in terms of and manifested elements of our faith, our, uh, in, our, our contributing elements to that. And so when we think about when we encounter difficult times, when we encounter challenging times, it's a very interesting verse that's actually in the Bible. Uh, in, uh, in, in, in James, it says that, you know, the testing of your faith produces perseverance, um, that the challenges that you endure uh, in life, the challenges that you endure with respect to your faith produce perseverance. Um, and we, we, we see uh, this happen in life that, you know, you, 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 you know, iron uh, sharpens iron, that diamonds are made under pressure, that gold is purified in a, in a furnace and, you know, all of these different analogies that are there, but the testing of your faith produces perseverance that it's not just, you know, the testing of your theology, not just the testing of uh, your, your religious knowledge or what we understand to just be your uh, ritual worship or whatnot, but the testing of you as a whole, the testing of your faith as a whole produces perseverance. You know, think about the times that we faced setbacks in our life, uh, how, how much more we learn from adversity and from setbacks than we may do from success, that the test that you might have failed, the test that you might have uh, passed uh, with great grades, or um, the times you may have done really well, or the times you would have uh, not done so well, but gotten really good feedback, in which ways would you have probably learned more? Would you have understood more about yourself and would have then performed better than the next iteration? That the testing of our faith produces perseverance. And uh, the Quran tells us that, O ye who believe, that seek help through patience and prayer. Indeed, Allah is with the patience that as we understand that we are, as the Quran tells us, going to be tested with fear, tested with hunger, tested with loss of wealth and food and land and all the different tangibles that are there. But we, but Allah gives glad tidings to those who are patient, that this is, is a fact that we are going to, it's because we say we believe, it doesn't mean we're going to be exempt from any of these hardships or from any things that are going to test our faith, are going to test our faith, both in the spiritual sense, but in the physical sense. Uh, our, our bodies are aging. Our bodies are uh, closely day by day approaching death. Um, you know, we are being tested in so many different ways and realms, but these tests are not reserved for people who just didn't say that they're not going to believe. They're for everyone, whether they said they would believe or they wouldn't believe. Uh, and then what it brings about for us, though, what is it? What is this? What do these tests? What do these, uh, you know, changes kind of bring about for us? Does it make us feel further and further disconnected from Allah, or does it make us think more and more deeply of how Allah is intrinsically involved in our life and how our faith is more and more intrinsically a part of us than anything else? That we see that Allah has told us that you're going to be tested with these things. Your life is going to go through ups and downs. You're going to have these challenges that come about. Your seasons are going to come. There's going to be great times. There's going to be difficult times. But what are you going to do with it? And when you cheat, when you uh, when you are uh, encountering these difficulties, how is your faith going to manifest? Where is your belief in Allah? Where is your belief in God going to manifest in any of those aspects? You know, when we are in the relational sphere, when we're in the social sphere, when we're in the interpersonal sphere, whatever it might be, in the political job sphere, whatever it might be, 
we don't do any of those mindless of Allah, or we shouldn't do any of those mindless of Allah. We should be conscious of God and connected to our faith in each of these elements. But when we encounter hardships in each and every one of these, why is it that uh, you know we 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 center upon uh, our our faith as as that which gets hit the easiest? Um, and and what does it say with respect to what our faith means to us? That if we encounter a hardship, our first thought might be that Allah doesn't like me, Allah hates me, Allah doesn't want this or uh i'm just not good enough or my faith is just not making sense and so uh i'm just going to leave that behind you know what does it say with respect to how we're connected and instead how allah tells us that seek help through patience and prayer how often is it that we see our prayer our ibadat our salah sometimes in the midst of life full-time jobs whatever it might be a school uh that our salah sometimes interrupts that schedule our prayer interrupts that and feels disruptive it feels like it's getting in the way but how often versus conceptualizing as just an obligation, as just something that's there, do we conceptualize as something that uh, we may need that patience? You know, we may be running on impatience throughout the whole day. We may be running on, you know, just that fear and and and, and dread, uh, and and we may just need that moment of respite. But in what way can our faith be our men, our practicing of that faith, our ritual practice of that faith, be an outlet, as Allah tells us, to be a source of help? Uh, a source for patience, a source uh, that brings about uh, a calmness of the heart. Uh, and thinking about that when we approach that prayer space, when we approach those prayer mats, when we approach uh, the, the dimensions that we associate with our faith, not just in the ritual sense, but in complete congruence with what we are experiencing, how much more rich will our experience be? Versus that when we feel like we have to go to the prayer mat, we have to go do our salah, we have to do our dua, there's only certain things we can recite and that's it. But thinking about in what ways do we kind of spiritually bypass ourselves when we say our intention for our prayer and we just lose the focus on um, the things that might be bothering us, the things that might be we might be holding that might be difficult and might be challenging. In what ways can we utilize that space? Uh, because our faith is not to be disconnected from our challenges in life. Um, it's absolutely going to be affected by and manifested within these aspects as well. So how can we build a congruency there uh, with respect to what goes on in, in our life outside of our worship, outside of, you know, the things that we've learned from our religion and our faith. Um, and how can our faith be something that really does bridge that gap, but gives us the strength that maybe something outside there could not give us, something that the world sees as a coping mechanism could not give us. Uh, and thinking about how each of these things that are there, uh, the different adversities that we might face, the different difficulties that we might face, that uh, each of these things has a direct impact upon our faith, whether we recognize it or not. Um, and so if we acknowledge that we might go through a loss, we might go through some trauma, we might uh, you know, lose a loved one, we might lose our job, we might encounter any kind of adversity or test or anything like that out uh, or difficulty or whatnot out in the real in the world. And in what ways uh, do we sometimes find out later than before that these are probably going to have direct impacts upon our faith, um, upon our, our belief, or upon our connection. And if our faith is simply just impacted, that as soon as we lose one, it's impacted in the other, as the Quran tells us that people might be afflicted with adversity, and then they, uh, you know, they, they, their faith is shaken in that way. In what ways we can think about how uh, we reconceptualize this, that we understand that life is going to have its seasons. Our faith is going to have its seasons. But if we continue to approach it in the same hollowed out manner that we had, that we learned at one part of life where we keep it all the way through, in what ways can our faith actually and is so much more, much more uh, dynamic than what we had associated to be? So just inshallah, as we close out here, just to think about what we grew up with, what we learned with respect to our faith uh, is is, is understanding just like one part of the toolkit that we have. It's not just one particular tool. It has so many other elements to it. Uh, it's not just a screwdriver. It might have a hammer. It might have a flashlight. It might have a little nail cutter. It might have a little knife. You know, I have all these different things for you to be able to use at different seasons, uh, but not all of them have to be used right now. But each of these things can speak to us in different conditions, that when we are struggling financially, when we are struggling relationally, we seek that help. Uh, we seek uh, that patience and perseverance through our prayer. Um, we, we we find the connection, the consolation, uh, not just in the spaces that are outside, that of course we should source, find our resources and help outside, but we also find that within our own religion, our own faith. Otherwise we feel like we're living two completely different lives, that 
oh, I'm experiencing this, I'm experiencing this, but I've got to just tune that out and just do my salah. No, we, we can be fully intentional with our salah, have full khushu and be present there, but also be our full selves um, to where we're not spiritually bypassing ourselves. And instead, our faith is much more dynamic and speaking to the difficulties we are encountering in life, the difficulties we are experiencing, um, and vice versa, that when we experience those difficulties, we don't just associate it in the negative with our faith, but we see how can our faith be something that helps us in this moment, um, because our faith can speak to some of those intangibles. It doesn't work on like a reward system or anything like that. Um, it speaks as Allah tells us that, you know, it's in that intangible sense that, you know, if you if you are touched with affliction, you know, there's none that can take it away except Allah, that Allah has power over all things, um, that that it, it frees some of that, uh, the anxiety and the control that we sometimes feel like we need to have, that we've lost something, we need to, uh, we need to be the ones that do all this stuff, and we can only do so much. When we turn over those keys to Allah, and we have that true firm faith, uh, that and that belief that that will happen, when we go through these difficulties, when we encounter hardships in one space, uh, or whether it's great things in another space, we don't do it disconnected from Allah. So thinking about, uh, as we talk about what is faith being adaptive, what does adapting faith mean? Thinking about how we reconceptualize what that faith is for us. What, how do we understand faith to be? Is it just a theoretical concept? Is it just something we've come to believe and you know, we just uh, allot some time for at some parts of the day? Or is it something that just as much as uh, any other part of our life works in tandem and is in sync that when we experience uh, difficulty, when we when our heart is broken, when we have a physical ailment or anything else that comes about, our faith is a direct thing that we, we go to with respect to uh, seeking for the remedy, seeking for the help, seeking for the clarity around this. Um, because if it's only being used as something that is like uh, a fire alarm or just something that uh, is, is just like a, a resource pool that, well, we can just uh, use this um, now that if we're losing our money, we have to just pray and then Allah will restore that money or whatnot. No, that, that's a very cheap vending machine type of uh, relationship with faith. But in what ways we can reconceptualize it to be that in in uh, an aspect that when we lose that financial stuff, or we may have uh, go through a divorce, we may go through a separation, we may lose a loved one, may experience the death of a loved one, that our faith is not just going to be tested by that person's loss or that that tangible loss that we experience, but our faith can be a mechanism of making meaning. It can be a mechanism of some respite. It can be a mechanism and an outlet for which this difficulty is not just spiritually bypassed, but is experienced and is something that is sought for comfort through. Um, and instead of seeing our faith just as that one aspect, seeing what does it look like to be able to see it in so many different seasons, but be able to understand as well that there's going to be times where we're going to struggle with certain things. There's going to be certain times where it feels like our faith does not make sense, that it doesn't connect with this thing. The challenge is then for us to learn about the different toolkit that this faith has. It's not just that screwdriver. You have to learn, look for what else does it have to offer because that, that solution is within our faith. But if we are going to turn a blind eye to our faith, how much can we expect for our faith to meet us at the times where we need it most uh, and for what we need it to be in the most space? So thinking about, inshallah, as we close, to we 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 ask Allah to to bestow upon us a faith that's not just the ones of our forefathers in in name, that is not just the one of our forerunners in faith in name uh, and in in association alone or in affiliation alone, but to bestow upon us a faith that they had uh, that in that they that they retained through the hardships, through the through the good days, through the difficult days, uh, and that kept them that kept them going, but that was adaptive for them. Uh, that was dynamic for them, that whatever they experienced in life, whatever they challenges they went through in that life, that they didn't do it disconnected from or feeling separated from their faith. Uh, they found their faith as a source of solace, as a source of, uh, as a respite space, as a space where uh, it could be directly connected um, versus is just seeing it as an additive. And may Allah make it to be so within our hearts. May Allah make it to be so within all of our seasons. And as uh, the poet Khalil Gibran says that, you know, if I accept the sunshine and warmth, I also must accept the thunder and the lightning. Uh, that similarly, we as uh, as Muslims, as uh, believers, we accept that there are going to be hardships, there are going to be good days, there are going to be bad days, there's going to be uh, bright sunny days, there's going to be thundering days, uh, and our faith exists throughout all of them, but not just in the ritual. Our faith exists in and of ourselves of our, our breathing moments. Um, and when we speak about adapting faith, what does it mean for us to reconceptualize each and every moment that we wake and we live is a moment lived in faith. 
uh, versus just seeing it as something relegated to a certain part of our life. And when we reconceptualize that as something intrinsic to us, we start to change the paradigm and change our dynamic with our faith. Uh, and may Allah allow us to have and experience that uh, for all of us um, for when those days do get a little bit rainy and difficult or whether they stay shiny and sunny, uh, that we never forget our connection to our faith because as the Quran tells us that whoever should hope for the meeting of Allah, indeed, that term is decreed and that term is coming. And Allah is the hearing and the knowing. And whoever strives only for their own benefit, indeed, Allah is free from those needs. And those who believe and do righteous deeds, they will that Allah will surely remove from them their misdeeds and will surely reward them according to the best of what they used to do. So uh, inshallah, may Allah enable us to uh, experience this. May Allah enable us to uh, achieve that which we hope for uh, and recognize that uh, whether all the good things that we do or any of the negative things that we do, uh, Allah is capable and powerful over all, uh, and that we simply walk towards this in uh, in, in hopes of meeting Allah. Inshallah, Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Again, Jumaa to you all. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah.